So I'm a brain scientist and as a brain scientist I'm really interested in how we can um, harness new technologies to enhance brain functions. So as was already announced, I'm going to tell you about one kind of technology, video game. And mind you, I'm not going to tell you about all video games. I'm going to tell you about one genre of video game, which we call action video games, which are really first or third person shooter games. Basically the worst game you can think of. 20 years ago, when some of you watched your kids or were trying those games, you thought you were convinced it was a total waste of time. What I'm going to show you is about 20 year, years of research, I'm going to summarize in five minutes, that these games actually have potent positive effect. Let me take one example from uh, our work on vision. So in the kind of experiments we do in the lab, we invite young individuals, 18 to 30 years of age, we measure their vision, for example, how well they can resolve letters, and then we randomized half of them to be forced to play action video games, so these first or third person shooter games. And the other half is forced to play also commercially available games, but that have very different types of mechanics. So for example, social simulation games or puzzle games. Everybody play. In the experiment I'm thinking about, it's a 50 hour training experiment. It is not 50 hours in three days, let me be clear. Um, short distributed practice is still what the brain wants and what the brain likes. So it's about 30 minutes to one hour, five times a week over a period of 10 to 12 weeks. Once everybody has finished their training, we wait a little bit and then we test again their vision. And if it's truly a causal effect of playing those video games, what we expect is that the people we have assigned to the action group that we are forced to play those games will show improvement in vision that are greater than the people that have been forced to play the control games. And this is exactly what we showed in a number of experiments where, for example, by playing those games, we can improve how well people resolve small print uh, when they read. This has actually led to a number of applications in trying to help patients with poor vision. But what caught our attention is that these games were not just good for vision. There are co colleagues in Toronto that looked at a very different aspects of uh, brain function, which is called mental rotation something that the old folks in the room will know we were supposed to do when we were looking at maps. Um, now you have your automatic GPS and then you don't do much of rent mental rotation. But in the lab, what, um, the way we measured it is um, by using this kind of test. So this is actually a paper and pencil test. People come to the lab and they have to solve the following problem. The shape on the right is a reference shape. And as a participant, you have to tell me which of the four other shapes is a rotated version of that reference shape. So is it shape one, shape two, shape three, or shape four? Three, yes, some of you have a brain. Thank you. Um, so same type of experimental design. People come to the lab. Their mental rotation is being measured on this paper and pencil test. Then half of the participants are assigned to play an action video game. The other half are assigned to play a control game. And here it's a 10 hour training study. So it's not 10 hours in a day, it's 10 hours over two weeks. And after the end of the two weeks, once the training is done, participants come back to the lab and they are tested again on this mental rotation test, except we don't use the same shapes, we use new shapes so that there is no effects of memory that are possible. And here, same effect, we see that the participants that have been forced to play the action video game improve on the test, those that have been forced to play the control game don't show any change. 
We now have um, about 20 years of research on that topic. Um, it was a chance discovery in my lab at the beginning of the year 2000. I was actually working on deafness, so I'd be very interested in talking to the person that asked the question about deafness. Um, and we have been doing a meta-analysis where we've taken the body of work in the literature through these 20 years to um, show two different effects. One is that, indeed, if you force people like you in the room to play action video games, you can improve their cognition. It's an effect which is a small effect, but it's sizable, like a robust, reliable effect. And interestingly, that's more like sort of a social question, if you look at people that are self-declared player of those games, so people that pick up those games and say, oh yeah, I, I play Call of Duty, I play those kind of games, those people also have enhanced cognition, and this is a stronger effect. Now, this may come as a surprise, because as we heard before, um, there's almost no week that comes by in the media without having reports that playing video game is bad for you, that it's going to turn you into a zombie. I'm not telling you it's not the case, I'm telling you that in the case of action video game, it's not the case. And we have actually been able to show the mechanism um, at play here. These individuals, as they train, become better at making fast and correct decisions. So that means they can make more correct decisions per unit of time. And we know that this is coming from enhanced attentional control. You had a magician, a mentalist here. Well, one of the trick is to actually trick your attention. One of the aspects of cognition that this game train is exactly that function that has some limit. So attentional control is really the ability that we have to focus on the task at hand and ignore source of distraction or noise. And the fact that we can move our attention relatively fast from one place to another if we want to. This is a kind of skill that is useful in everyday life. Um, one of the domain where, uh, for example, you use your attentional control is when you learn to read. Um, you have not only to suppress distractions surrounding, but also know how to locate your attention over the page in order to read properly. And there are a number of studies that show that at least for children where we know that the roadblock to reading is attentional control, playing action video games, games that have these action video game features, helps their learning to read. We have also done a number of research to understand what are the neural mechanisms. So what's happening to the brain of these people as they train and play those action video games. And being able to show that what's improved and what changes is a network that has been studied a lot by a number of my collaborators. It's called the frontoparietal network of attention because it involves a crosstalk between your frontal cortex and your parietal cortex in the service of controlling where you're paying attention. So right now, either you're looking at your phone, I see a number of you doing that, you're using your frontal co parietal cortex to direct your attention to the phone, or to me, but in either case, you're actually using your frontal parietal cortex to direct your attention. This network becomes much more automatic and efficient in individuals that play action video games. So I realize that a number of you may be quite confused at this point. Because um, who should you believe? I am telling you, playing action video game is good for your brain. You heard before, oh, you know, mobile technology and those mobile phones, it's a real plague. It's like there are actually good scientific studies showing that it's bad for us. And if I may add to the confusion, just a month ago, was published in quite a respected journal, Nature Human Behavior, a paper looking at a very large cohort of adolescents, 30,000, and showing that there was basically no effect whatsoever of screen time. Screen time usage had exactly the same negative effect as regularly eating potatoes in your diet. Okay. So what's going on? Are those scientists just confused and they don't know what they're saying? Well, we're not confused, but we know that different technology use have different impact. So if you're going to look at screen time, you're putting in the same bag 
impact that may be positive, impact that may be negative, impact that may be neutral, and as a result of the large source, you get no effect. Um, we know that using mobile technology and multitasking between different media doesn't have the same impact as playing those action video games. And actually, media multitasking, what some of you may think of, and that, by the way, Steve Jobs sold beautifully to the 21st century, seems to not be such a hot idea for your attention control. Like, in the lab, we get people that say, oh, I have great attention control, I can media multitask like a queen or a goddess. And then we measure them, and at best, they are the same as people that don't do media multitasking, but very often, they are actually worse. So they have this self-perception of being better, but in fact, they pay a price for it. Um, the other thing we know is that even within a media, take video game, very often I'm being asked, what's the impact of video game on your brains? Well, it's not a question we can answer. Different video games have different impact. I showed you through the training study we do that we compare playing action video games, which has this first or third person shooter game, to playing other commercially available games that people also like, that they're willing to pay for, and those other video games don't have the same effect. I'm not telling you they have no effect, they just don't have the same effect. So we need to be very granular. One more level of granularity, we know that the specificity of the user matter. I've shown you that in our research, when we look at typically, typically developing individuals, playing those action video games leads them to be having to, to show higher uh, attention. If we now turn to individuals that have attentional problems, these video games don't help those individuals in the same way. Why? Because they don't play in the same way. Um, so that's one source of confusion. Another source of confusion is that the very same impact is valued very differently by society. And that's going to go nearer to the topic of um, this whole day. Um, I work with a lot of gamers, obviously. And yes, there are people that are pretty obsessed by their gaming. They are happy to game. They actually want to be recognized as gamer, they may even want to make it a career. And as a result, they say, ooh, I'm really, um, like, don't have to do that. I'm, I have to, don't have time to come to the movie with you. I'm going to have to go and do my gaming training. A number of you may have said that in the past month to your wife or your, like, dear friends. Ooh, I have to finish this project. Can't come with you. It happens that work addiction or sport addiction in our society are called mixed blessing addiction. Why? Because these are activities we value. But other activities that we don't value as much have much more negatively viewed. And that really comes to the last slide and the key question uh, for today is, if we are going to develop new technologies, human enhancement technologies, what's our goal? What's our like framework? And I was part of a World Economic Forum uh, Council that reflected upon this issue and put forward something that you heard before, that we want to work here for the well-being and quality of life of uh, humans. Here we're going to say not just in terms of economical term, we took a stance in terms of psychological well-being, that people actually feel satisfied with their life. And one of the points that was made in one of the oil talk is that we have to be very aware that enhancing at the level of the individual doesn't guarantee enhancing at the level of the collectivity. And that's something that is very often forgotten by uh, developers or different uh, entrepreneurs when we think about enhancement. And so that's one topic for our further discussion. Right now, I'd like to thank all of you and thank the organizer um, very much. <laughs>